As with example one in this section, here I'm trying to find a confidence interval for the mean, but what has changed is the information that I'm given. Once again, I have an average coming from a sample, but also notice that I have a standard deviation with that. Now in the last problem, we were told that we had a population standard deviation in example one. This time we're not told that. In fact, it says the average checking account balance of 41 of its visitors is 540.15 with a standard deviation of. So that phrase right there is telling me that this is a sample standard deviation. So this is no longer sigma, this is S. Anytime I'm trying to estimate uh, a value for the population mean, in other words, find a confidence interval for the population mean, and I don't know sigma, I'm going to use a T distribution. The formula for a T distribution is almost the same, for a T interval is almost the same, except the critical value now, instead of a ZC, is a TC. And this comes from a more complex table, which you can find in your textbook. And also, since we don't know sigma, I have to estimate the standard error, and I'll use S in place of sigma here. Okay, now TC in this particular case, what we'll do is we'll look for, on the T table, we'll look for degrees of freedom. And so degrees of freedom are in that first column, and it's based off your sample size. For the T distribution, when you're estimating a single mean, it's going to be N minus 1. In this case, that's 41 minus 1, which is 40. So I want to go down to that column for 40, in the first column down to 40, and I want to look in the row until I hit the column that says 0.95 for confidence level. And when I do that, I end up with TC from the table equals 2.0211. So a good thing to do would be to look at the T table and make sure you get this exact same value. Okay, so now I'm just going to plug in like I did before. So for this, I have 540.15, and then plus or minus, and then TC in this case is 2.0211, and then S is 86.90, and N is 41, so this is the square root of 41. So just like I did before, when I do this margin of error, so this whole thing is the margin of error, when I calculate this, what I want to do is do it all within the calculator. That way I don't have any rounding error around at the very end. So I'm going to put this into my calculator and tell you what I get. So I do 86.9 uh, divided by square root of 40. I get 13.74, but there's a lot of decimals to it. I didn't touch it. I'm just doing times, so answer times 2.0211 and I get a margin of error of 27.77. Okay, now remember, I can leave my final answer in this form, that's okay. And so I put my dollar signs on there, I could say this is my 95% confidence interval, or what I could do is now do the addition and subtraction. So if I was to do that addition and subtraction, I would do 540.15 minus 27.77, and I get 512.38, comma, and then I could also do the 540.15 plus the 27.77, and I get 567.92. So again, the way I could interpret this particular one is I would say that I'm 95% confident that uh, the average checking account balance for all visitors of this website if somewhere between $512 and $500, maybe $68 would be a nice way to round that. So again, pay close attention to that idea of interpretation. But again, your final answer comes from this simple calculation. It's all about determining what procedure to use.